a year on from making the the life changing decision to have amputation surgery, Nikki Bradley from Milford is, uh, I suppose, about to uh, embark on a, another surgical journey. And Nikki is a, a teenage survivor of the rare bone disease Ewing's sarcoma and a well-known adventurer and motivational speaker and she uh, well she was faced with having a number of issues with her right hip this is after her uh, cancer treatment uh, for years and after coming through the pandemic uh, she decided to make the tough decision to have what's called uh, rotation plasty surgery and then in February of last year, she went over to Birmingham to the orthopaedic hospital in Birmingham. Uh, and there, uh, there was a, a portion, what, what this surgery involves is a portion of a limb being removed, rotated and reattached. Uh, it's, it's, it sounds amazing. It sounds almost bizarre in, in one way. And uh, uh, Nikki now is here in the studio. Nikki, how are you? <laughs> I always love hearing people describe rotation plasty because it really is it's as complicated as it sounds mm. um and as you say it's it's quite bizarre but when it works it works very well right um it does sound i hope you don't mind me saying it does sound all. like something from a science fiction <laughs> film and you're thinking no that's not possible because they wouldn't do that but explain uh, uh why it was what was done and why it was done so exactly as you say, um, the the amputation it's it's a very rare form of amputation, um, and on this side of the world, the the main reason that it is so rare is simply due to how it looks. Um, so um, as you say, the the limb is removed, rotated 180 deg uh, degrees, and reattached. It's done for a number of reasons. It's usually down to cancer of some sort um, and the complications that are that arise as a result of treatment. Um, in my case, I opted for the even more rare again version of a rotation plasty so the, the main problem with with me and always has been since i had um radiotherapy in 2004 is the issues with my hip mm. uh, the rest of my leg was always fine but my hip caused so many issues you know two te two failed hip replacements and um, a number of other things that were going on on the right hand side so when i was introduced to this type of surgery the, the purpose of it was to fix the hip. Um, so what they did was remove the um, the prosthetic that was already in there when I had my second hip replacement and repla actually replaced it with my knee. Um, so my knee joint is currently in there and is acting as the hip joint. Um, so, you, so they put in your, uh, your leg from the knee down? For, yeah, yeah. Into where your hip was? Yeah. So they, they removed the hip um, and removed part of the thigh um, and basically, yes, just replaced out that hip prosthetic with my knee um, w after rotating it. So the reason you rotate it is because you you want that movement done in a different way. So obviously a knee joint only moves, like if people listening, you know, lift their leg up and down, move their knee, you'll see that, you know, it doesn't move side to side, it moves up and down. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, you know, I need the I needed the joint to, to work in a certain way. And it's the same with the ankle. Um, so I still have my foot. It's just brought up and obviously because the whole leg was rotated, so was my foot. Um, and the main purpose of keeping my foot was to to use the ankle as a knee joint. So you're, it's basically the best form of recycling in the whole world. <laughs> it does, uh, yeah. Making the most of what, you know, the rest of my leg that was perfectly functional and always had been um, and was never able to function properly because of the issues in my hip. So I will say that Obviously, you know, you're, you, you've led into um, I will be facing further surgery. So I have decided after living with it for a year, I have decided that unfortunately the function that we were hoping to get from the ankle just hasn't really worked. There hasn't been because there is a significant leg length difference when I'm sitting down. The two, you know, the ankle and my actual knee on my left side are not side by side. So when you go to bend, they're they're at different levels. Mm. It's extremely hard to explain no, um, no. over over radio, but um, yeah, I, like I lived with it for a year, and I did as much as I could. Like I'm currently sitting here with my prosthetic on, and I'm able to do. You know, I'm down to one crutch. I'm able to walk short distances with one, which is something that 
my surgeon said, do not expect to get off your crutches. You know, don't go into this thinking that will be the goal. Um, and so I listened and I didn't. However, my specialists in Dublin, who are the prosthetic specialists, said the complete opposite. So they were like, you know what, go aim for, for the stars. Mm. Um, and already at home, I, I don't use my crutch. I You know, I, I do limp, but I'm getting around without either crutches at home. Mm. Um, and that's incredible. I, like, you know, I've been doing that for a couple of months and I only have the prosthetic for about four and a half months. So... So the the hip part worked fine. Yeah. It was the the ankle part that's now down at your knee that that just that we're having issues with. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So to to enable the prosthetic to use the ankle to work, um, it would have required putting hinges either side, um, which added quite a lot of weight. So prosthetics are you know this prosthetic leg weighs quite a bit, um, and when we tried the first prototype, did have the hinges at the ankle. Um, and as soon as I, I tried it on, I'm my specialist at Autobock down in Dublin. As soon as I sat down and tried to draw my leg inwards to, you know, sit in a proper seated mm-hmm. position, knee side by side, I instantly knew in that moment that no amount of physio would get what I wanted from this. And what I want is to get back to the top of Ergal and to get back to the top of Muckish and to do all the things that I love doing. Um, And the reason that I chose, because I did choose to go for this surgery, um, the reason that I did this was to secure my future. Um, to, 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 To go into surgery of this size, you need a certain level of strength mentally and um, you also need to have strong bones everywhere else so if mm. i had have waited too long you know i could have had just with general aging i could start to have a bit of wear and tear on the other side and it could have made for complications down the line so i made that decision while i was still relatively young to to secure my future and now that this hasn't quite gone to plan just with the ankle it's not the end of the world it will require basically another form of amputation but to be honest, that's fine. You know, that's just part of it. So the other form of amputation is going to be removing your ankle and attaching, a, and ultimately attaching a prosthetic to that. Yeah, so it, it won't look hugely different to the one that I'm wearing today. So it'll look like if you imagine just a regular person that has a prosthetic leg, they have, um, you know, they have it wherever they have it. But when they sit down, they both of the knees, one mechanical, one real, are side by side. So I'll eventually have that. So they'll they'll remove the entire foot, obviously the ankle, and a little bit further up my leg mm. to allow for the mechanical knee to then fit side by side. So it's hilarious that I'm speaking about this publicly and I haven't even told my surgeon yet, but oh. he's going to find out on the 7th. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the next appointment. Yeah. Uh, um, so how do you feel about it all now? I mean, it, it is, it's, it's a setback for sure. Um, was it, I mean, did, did, you, did you feel confident that it would work or was it just, you know, you were willing to take the chance? No, um, I was confident in the, my, the abilities of my surgeon and his way of thinking, but he was very clear Pragmatic. with me from the beginning. And um, before I, I agreed to this at all, he said, look, there are absolutely no guarantees. And what he meant was there's no guarantees that the hip area will work. But um, it has worked. It has for the for the most part, it's worked. It's a very slow healing process. Um, so the bones in. So essentially, my shin is around the opposite of where it should be. Mm. They want th- that bone and all the surrounding bones to knit in with everything else. You know, I'm obviously not a surgeon. I'm trying to explain it just from what he said but it is a slow process but I know from the feeling of it I know that for the most part you know I'm the pain is nowhere near what it was a few months ago so I know there is healing happening so that side of things is is a success and it's it's an ongoing thing that we will um you know we will keep an eye on I suppose you're asking the body to do something that it's it's just it's just not it just doesn't understand exactly and actually the biggest the biggest thing my brain had to navigate was the switch around of where the nerves are so I experienced severe nerve pain um, for months after the surgery. And again, I was warned that this would happen because the nerves were firing. They were trying to find their way home, essentially. Mm. Um, and I would have, you know, very severe feelings of like prickling on my foot, um, pins and needles, but to a level that like, obviously everybody has experienced pins and needles at some point. But this is this was a level I actually couldn't tolerate. It was horrendous. Um, and I had to wait that out. You know, I'd wake up every morning and just say to myself, keep your head down. That would be the first thing I would say to myself. Keep your head down and keep going. This will get better. This is just a process. And that's how I see, the you know, having this next surgery. I knew from when they kept the foot, I actually wanted them to remove it when we had the, 
when I had my first surgery, I wanted them. I wanted to bypass this whole past year um, of trying to deal with the foot and just just kind of get rid of it. Yeah. But my surgeon said, let's at least give it a go. And I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad that I've lived with it like this because it is day to day having your foot on the other way. Even things like lying on the couch, your foot is being pressed into it. So I always have to have a cushion underneath. There's things like that that I always have to think about. How I drive has to, you know, I have to think about absolutely everything. And I actually think that has made me stronger. And it's certainly made me appreciate things that maybe I had not appreciated before the surgery. So definitely not not a negative. Um, it's just the next step, I think. That's the way I'm viewing it. And when when do you ho- when do you think do you have you any idea when it'll be this sometime this year will it? I hope so. Um, I think judging by the way my surgeon works, if I went in on the seventh and said, "Look, I want it gone," he would fit me in somewhere. Like he's very good like that, and he deals with unusual cases, so he knows that you know you're not just put on a waiting list and told to come back in two years. It doesn't work like that, thankfully. Um, but I am thinking about how much downtime was required for the recovery last year. Um, so I'm, I am I do want it this year. It's just, you know, do I do I sacrifice my summer um, and spend that time recovering or do I wait into the winter months when everybody's inside anyway and do it then? It's a little bit of a, I'm, yeah. I'm working out the logistics. And w- will, w- will this be as big a surgery and as long a recovery time as the, the, the first operation? Absolutely not. And I think that's why I'm not as nervous or as apprehensive. Um, This will be this part. There there may be further surgery up in the hip area down the line. But for the foot area, this will be just, you know, a standard amputation. Um, And I, you know, I've obviously never had that exact surgery before, but I imagine that it's just the chop it off and and then I heal. I don't think it sounds so simple. (laughs) But you're still recovering. I mean, the process of recovering from the the hip operation is ongoing, uh, given that it's a a different limb that's in there now. Uh, And then you're going to have this other uh, surgery and there's uh, obviously rehab and uh, recovery from that as well. So you, you are going to have a lot going on for a for a while. Yeah, and it's, you know, if I think about it too much, it can feel very daunting, but because I am still very much in it, um, and I'm, you know, I have the guys just over, just just right beside us here, um, no barriers. I go to them for physio, who are excellent. I'm so lucky that we have that facility in Donegal. So that will continue. Um, we'll just kind of adapt things after the surgery. Um, you know, my first fitting post-op will be four weeks after, my first fitting for the prosthetic will be four weeks after I have... My, the, the ankle amputated yeah. you know, that's very different to the first operation it was you know there was a couple of months of recovery needed before I was able to to visit Autobock for my first fitting so that's that just goes to show how, how quickly we can move on after this next surgery which is great what what keeps you going what um what gives you the strength uh, um, when you when you're going through you know when there's been nerve damage and pain and discomfort and lack of sleep and everything else that goes with it? What keeps you going? Is it if you if you know that you, if you know you're making progress? I'm sure it's not every day and every week that you do make progress, but is is it something like that 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 keeps you? Yeah, definitely. It's you know, I do keep an eye on the end goal, which is when my when I'm in a prosthetic that fits me perfectly that I can go and live the life that I want to lead like I do think about that often but I don't think about that day to day because that is still a little bit away yet right. so what I do is and I think most people probably do this I break things down and um, I set myself smaller goals and especially when you're recovering you know my goals after the the first operation were as small as try and have a shower by yourself without needing a nurse with you like stuff like that that yeah. They, they are it's something taken for granted by so many people but when you've had huge surgery being able to actually go from a bed to a bathroom by yourself is like you'd be exhausted by the time you do that um, but then the following week you notice that you did a little bit more than the week before and mm-hmm. if you keep an eye on those little things it you feel good knowing that you are moving in the right direction and obviously there's setbacks with anything and you know as long as I don't let them get to me then I can move forward and and maintain a good mindset I think now it's not like you've been resting on your laurels because you, you you've been out doing some walks and you're you're even out in the snow I was this I absolutely love the snow it's my favorite yeah. type of weather um and I hate the ice because for anybody on crutches knows ice just it's terrifying but I love the snow um and I live 
beside quite like a lot of hills. Um, so when I saw the snow, I was like, right. And especially in Donegal, you know, you could wake up with snow one day and rain the next. So I thought this could be the only day we have it. So make the most yeah. of it. So I did. Um, and I, I used it as an opportunity to practice uphill walking, which with this particular prosthetic is quite a challenge because of how it moves. So, yeah, I had a fun day and it, made the most first, of it. That first day was spectacular. Because it was. Uh, it was. It was cold and the snow was lying on the trees and there yeah. was enough of it. It just it was picture postcard stuff. So you were you had a busy day that I day. I did. It was amazing. Um, and it's that's the thing. Like, I mean, you can spend every day thinking about how severe everything is or you can look out the window, see a bit of snow. And even though I'm a woman in my 30s, it doesn't matter what age you are. Go out and have a bit of fun if you can. Brings and out the big child. In exactly. It. And that's just what I thought I did that day. And it made a huge difference. So, okay. yeah. OK. Well, uh, listen, I, I hope it all goes to plan uh, whenever you decide or whenever you can get the surgery. And the, uh, the, next, the next appointment now is 7th, 7th of this month? Yeah, it's next week. Oh, next week, yeah. OK. And it's actually, coincidentally, it's a year, to, that appointment will be a year to the day that I had my surgery. And um, that wasn't planned. It was just a weird coincidence. Um, so it'll be quite fitting going back to see the man that did all of this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and I'm sure you do know this, that you're you're an inspiration to many. A lot, a lot of people who, uh, 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 you know, are going through tough times, uh, maybe it's through uh, illness uh, or accidents, and uh, and they, they, you know, read about uh, your experiences and what, what you're going through and how you're, you're battling on and and how you succeed. And uh, and it is inspirational, and and even for for those who have those of us who who, who aren't going through it, it's, it's inspirational. Thank you. And you you also um, uh, do some talks. Uh, you're on the on the circuit, is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I've been doing that for a number of years, um, and I absolutely love it because actually, just as you mentioned about people going through a hard time, um, when I deliver a talk, and it doesn't matter whether it's corporate or with a charity or whoever, um. And it doesn't matter how high up these people are, everybody is going through something. And I think by me sharing my story, it allows other people to share theirs. And that's what often happens at the end of a talk. I'll spend half an hour having quite deep conversations with essentially strangers. And that's the side of my job that I absolutely love because it's not often that people get to do that, to be so open. Mm. Um, and it's quite therapeutic for everyone involved. Uh, so I'm very lucky I get to do that every now and again. Well, a big part of the reason, I suppose, is that you keep challenging yourself when you... When you um uh, when you've had all the treatment and then after the operation you keep on challenging yourself so uh, so long may that continue yeah. and uh, <laughs> best luck on the 7th and thank beyond and maybe we'll, we'll chat the other side brilliant thank thanks, you John thanks Updates with Ireland West Airport. Fancy a European city break this summer? Discover the beautiful cities of Barcelona, Cologne and Milan with Ryanair. 